Hi, my name is Dr. Joe Childs. I'm a board certified functional neurologist, and today I'd like to talk to you about why eye movements are so essential in helping people with concussions and why it's essential to look at eye movements, not only to look at them at the bedside, but to do some advanced eye movement testing in diagnosing concussion. This is where the research is going in concussion. What they're finding out is eye movements are a very good way of determining where the brain has been injured. So if you or a loved one suffered a concussion from either an athletic injury, a motor vehicle accident, or some other type of head injury, and you're still getting symptoms from the concussion, this video is going to be very eye-opening for you. So let's go. Let's talk a little bit more. So let's talk about post-concussion syndrome. What is post-concussion syndrome? Well, the typical person that has a concussion, typically concussions should go away, or the normal recovery time, the symptoms of a concussion should go away within about three to four weeks max. If you get a concussion that affects parts of your brain that um, control internal function or control eye movements and control what's called your vestibular system, then concussions can, can, can actually create symptoms for much longer. So if you're still having symptoms and it's been longer than three weeks, I think it's essential that you have your eye movements looked at to determine where the concussion is. So let's talk a little bit more about it. So when you get a concussion uh, or when a person injures their head, there is a mechanical trauma that actually shifts the brain, it actually moves the brain, and your brain is really soft, almost like gelatin. So it hits the inside of the skull, and that's where what a lot of people do not understand. But what's even more is there's some torquing forces that occur, and we're going to talk about them a little bit. So this mechanical trauma of the brain results in a biochemical reaction that involves inflammation in the brain. So it creates inflammation in the brain. Now you cannot see a concussion on MRI or on CAT scan. The reason why they do that after somebody gets a really bad head trauma is they're trying to check and see has there been a bleed on the brain, which can be very, very dangerous. So if you just had a concussion and you're watching this video, go to the hospital, get the imaging done, make sure it's not anything more serious. But if you had a concussion three weeks ago, a month ago, a year ago, two years ago, and you're still having symptoms, then that's not right. We should figure out exactly what's causing the problem. What they're finding is that you can't just rest a concussion forever. You know, what they're finding is a complete rest, complete rest and complete lack of light in the dark room is not exactly the best way to take care of a concussion. In fact, it actually causes a person to have longer prolonged symptoms. So we need to start doing rehab for these types of cases a little bit sooner. But if you're a person that has post-concussion syndrome beyond three, four weeks, then there's a problem and we need to look a little bit more in detail. So when the brain, let's talk a little bit about the brain. The brain, obviously this is the cortex of the brain. This is the, um, what we think of as the brain. But then you also have this structure right here called the brain stem. And then you have this area called the cerebellum. The cerebellum controls balance controls eye movements, and the, the brainstem controls all of your internal functions, your blood work, not your blood work, your blood flow, it controls all of your eye movements. So when we get into a concussion, what happens is the brain goes really fast and stops very quickly. And what that does is your brain is kind of like uh, a ball on a stick, and the stick is the brainstem. So imagine a ball on a stick and then that ball keeps going, that, that brainstem and cerebellum which holds the brain up gets torqued. It's kind of like taking a, a wet towel and this torquing forces and it creates boom. It creates an instant torque and what that does is distorts the way all of the mechanical uh, and physiological functions in that brain stem. Well what's in the brain stem are all these nuclei that control your eye movements. Okay, This is the brain stem, this is the cerebellum. When this part of the uh, of the brain is torqued in a concussion. This is when you get these prolonged lasting uh, types of concussions. So what we do is we test eye movements. We do eye movement testing and we use a, a machine called a VNG and a saccadometer, a saccadometer which measures reaction time. It measures the ability to keep gaze still. When the, when the brain stem gets torqued, the nuclei that control gaze stability start to go off. So instead of the eye staying stable, they may jerk around, uh, or it may 
uh, affect the part of the brain that controls your, your eye movements coming from close to far. And so somebody may have an eye that's now kind of tight and pulled in all the time, and that creates headaches and things of that nature. So it's essential that we look at eye movements and not just look at them at the bedside. We look at them at the bedside, but we use this advanced neurological testing to diagnose these areas. So every concussion in every person is different. None of them are the same. It depends upon our it depends upon which part of the brain has been affected and through our examination and our advanced neurological and eye testing we can figure out exactly what area is being affected. The big thing you have to understand is medications cannot fix the physiology of the areas of the brain that are not functioning well. Uh, they may get rid of symptoms or cover them up but the symptoms keep coming back because the drugs are actually not fixing this imbalance that has been created uh, in the uh, in the brainstem. So we do specific eye movements and neurological rehab to get somebody better. We're going to find out exactly what area of their brain is not functioning well and we're going to do rehabilitative strategies to affect that area specific to the eye movements and the examination findings uh, that uh, that we noticed uh, when we when we checked the patient with the concussion. So our office is Chester County Concussion. If you want to learn more about what we do, let's say you have a loved one, let's say you have an athlete or you had somebody that was in a car accident uh, and they had whiplash injury and they have neck pain, but they also get vertigo now, they get dizziness now, they just don't feel right, they can't concentrate, uh, then it's essential that, especially if it's been going on longer than a month, three weeks to a month, and it's essential that they, they come in and have their eyes checked and determine uh, what's going on with their eye movements. When I said eyes checked, I'm not talking about vision. I'm talking about ocular movements and ocular motility, okay? So if you'd like to learn more, click on this Facebook post and go to our website, ChesterCountyConcussion.com, and uh, we have a long video on there. We have lots of testimonials of people we've helped, and I think it's going to be eye-opening for you. All right, thank you very much. Take care.